Hello everyone, in this video I'll be taking a very quick look at this RTX 3080 Ti Supreme X from MSI, which is a graphics card that is absolutely so amazing that MSI thought it would be fitting to ask around 1850 euros for it. I mean, you still really cannot technically buy it, but that is a pretty hefty MSRP. Now, before you just start commenting about how I get all these graphics cards for free, I'm just gonna save you the trouble because this is literally one single media sample for the whole northern part of Europe. And after I'm done filming, it will be on its way to the next reviewer. So if you want to learn a bit more about how GPU samples actually work, I made a video about it a few months back, so go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And if you want to know how this card compares to the Founders Edition and the Gigabyte Gaming OC card, keep on watching. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Let's begin with a quick summary of the chip itself. It is basically an RTX 3090 with a couple of cores less and 12 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 24. And in games, it is only a couple of percent behind the 3090, which means that you can play any game comfortably on 1440p or even on 4K without any issues. Now the real challenge is still the RTX 3080, which is only seven to eight percent slower on average, but with an MSRP that is $500 lower. And all this would matter if there were any cards to buy at a normal price, which is not the current situation, as you all know by now. But let's see what MSI put together here. The Supreme X is actually a very impressive card. It is pretty massive, so you really want to make sure that you have enough space for it in your case. But it is also very well built, and I would say it's pretty good looking, especially if you're a fan of a lot of RGB. And when it comes to features, you get the usual fan stop feature when the card has nothing to do, and there is a dual BIOS switch. And next to the card, you also get a mouse pad and a nice GPU holder, which is definitely necessary for a card of this size. You get three display port connections and a single HDMI 2.1 port, so it is the same as on the Founders Edition, and you will need three 8-pin connectors to power it up. And now that we have it up and running, let's see how this card actually performs. Starting with the clock speeds, the Supreme X actually boosts considerably higher than the Founders Edition and the Gaming OC from Gigabyte, both in gaming and in the silent BIOS. There are actually no overclocks on the memory though. Now these higher clocks obviously lead to slightly higher in-game performance as well, which actually means that this 3080 Ti Supreme almost closes the gap when compared to the RTX 3090 Supreme. Now you probably won't really notice those extra few frames between the Founders Edition and this card, but it is technically faster. And in order to get that performance, MSI is letting the card use a lot more power than the other cards I tested. So the official TTP for the 3080 Ti is 350 watts, but this card uses almost 400 watts in both BIOS profiles, which is quite a lot for a card that is only a tiny bit faster. And more power also means more heat, which is why this MSI doesn't look that good in the thermal comparison chart as you would expect from a card of this size. Now in the gaming mode, it's a lot cooler than the FE, but it also makes more noise, while Gigabyte is both cooler and quieter. In silent mode, the MSI actually becomes nice and quiet while still cooler than the FE, but Gigabyte is yet again cooler and quieter in its silent mode and by quite a lot actually. And we can see the same thing in the noise normalized test. If we set the system to 40 decibels at a 50 centimeters distance, the MSI does well enough, but the gaming OC is shamelessly beating it by about 10 degrees because of its lower power draw. And the interesting part here is that when I reduce the noise by almost two decibels for the noise normalized test, the temperature went up only by a bit. So if you buy this card and you think, it's just a bit too loud, you can just reduce the fan speeds in the gaming mode and it wouldn't affect the temperature that much. The main thing this card is trying to be is the fastest, even if that means more power and more heat. 
And I do know that there are a lot of people out there who just want the fastest option on the market, yet again, no matter what. But there are definitely other things to consider here. Now, first of all, is this small performance increase really worth that extra power draw? And not just in cost, but your system will have to work a bit harder to get rid of that heat and it's going to be a bigger strain on your power supply as well. So you will need at least a good quality 850 watt power supply and I would say more would really hurt. But the main consideration here would be the price. So let's say this current stock situation magically disappeared overnight and all GPUs somehow became available at their MSRPs. Uh, the Founders Edition's MSRP of 1200 euros is already way too high compared to the 3080 that is only a tiny bit slower but costs a lot less. And with this MSI you only get a little bit of performance more than the FE and for that tiny improvement you have to pay 600 euros more. So even in a normal situation it would be pretty hard to recommend this card unless you're really willing to pay that much for the looks and the RGB alone. I mean, it's a great looking card, but is it 600 euros more pretty than the FE? But as you know, the situation in the world isn't really normal at the moment, and comparing all these different brands and models based on prices is basically impossible. So this card was actually listed in shops for over $2,500 a few days ago, which is purely insane. And the thing is, the shops are getting away with these prices because people are still buying them. So if I were you and I could wait a bit longer till the prices and availability settle down a bit, that would be the best option I could think of. And until then, I hope this review helped at least to get some numbers out there. Sorry, I couldn't do more right now. Now that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this very short little review and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye all.